going into 2022, you've been talking a lot about this scalability and governance is kind of a focus there, right? What, what needs to happen to succeed there in order for Cardano to succeed with those two things? Big time in 2022. Well, well on the scalability side, there are six things uh, that we're working on. And, you know, they're, they're just work. And we're making great progress on them. So, you know, people can see that publicly. So, one, there's a large-scale optimization program. Like, for example, we just released, released Node 1.3.3, and it cuts the sync time in half. And it's coming to Daedalus here in a little bit, but it's already deployed with the SPOs and the exchanges. Uh, so that's an example of just optimization, where now that we're moving from just a correctness focus to a performance focus, you're going to see lots of optimizations of libraries and business processes and things that traditionally take a while. And then that can be reflected by larger block size and all kinds of things. Okay, so that's one part of the agenda. Second part is pipelining. And the basic idea there is that normally in a blockchain system, you have a lot of work, no work, a lot of work, no work, a lot of work, no work, and that's the block production. So while the time between the block is being produced, the network's not really doing a lot. It's at a stall state. With pipelining, you amortize that cost over that no work period. So you get more work done, okay? The follow-up is introducing a DAG-like idea, so input endorsers. So it's not quite a DAG, but it, conceptually, you can think of it this way, where between the blocks, you can do a lot of micro blocks, and those micro blocks basically aggregate up and serialize, and they allow you to basically process as many transactions as the network will allow. So you're no longer constrained by block size, you're constrained by bandwidth and network availability. So as you optimize the network, you get even more throughput. And that's those things alone tend to push you into the 500 to 1,000 TPS range. And that's not really even fair because what is a TPS? You could have 1,000 inputs, 1,000 outputs potentially. And that from an Ethereum point would be 1,000 transactions. It's one transaction on Cardano, you see? So there's a lot of that. Then there's a kind of a meta thing that sits on top of that of smart contract optimization, just better utilization of the extended UTXO model and doing a lot more things off chain. Then you have Mithril and Hydra, and that's the kind of number four and number five parts. And, and Mithril is about great light client experience. So basically you can do parallel validation of the epics. So you get really fast sync for full nodes. So Daedalus gets a lot faster. And uh, the other side is that your light client has full node security. So whether you're using a browser-based client or a cell phone, you get the same security level as if you're using Daedalus, which means the preferred mode will be light clients for most people. Uh, and that's just great. Then Hydra is all about high TPS off-chain. So that's microtransactions to start. And then after that, state. So it's smart contracts off-chain. So just in time, as you move beyond that window of 500 to 1,000, you have Hydra as a place to do all those things on. And then finally, sidechains. And that's where you basically have different computing models and you can layer those in and make them interoperable with the main chain model. And Mamba, Milk Media, these types of things are examples of that. They're already making great progress there. So those six things have to happen. And what's nice is they're well quantified. Like we have great plans for pipelining. We know how to do it. And it looks like it's for the Vossel hard fork. There's a high degree of certainty there. That's the, there's three hard fork combinator events this year, one in February, one in June, one in October. And we're getting to a point where, you know, we, we believe the dates, they, they, they make sense and the packages of work are well-defined and there's not a lot of specters lurking around to kind of sting us in that respect. And um, it, go, ahead. go ahead. I was going to say, and these are the things that are going to improve the, the scalability aspect of Yeah, because higher TPS means more stuff can happen. Uh, also faster syncing. Uh, more like client user experience, which means you can do things from a user experience instantly that used to take minutes or hours. So every dimension of the experience will improve, and thus the use of utility of the system will improve. And there's kind of a side agenda to improve the express expressiveness of Plutus, which means it's more useful for a larger collection of dApps to build in the system. That's what SIP 31, SIP 32, and SIP 33 are about. And those will get done in June. 